Hello, my name is Meg Kwong. I'm the Executive Director at the Center for Connected Health Policy. Welcome to CCHP's Telehealth 201 Prescribing. These are short videos that we have put out to provide you with a little bit more background on prescribing and certain policy issues that relate to telehealth. We're going to go a little bit more in depth into certain issues in our 201 series, and today's is prescribing. A few disclaimers before we get started. Know that any information provided today's talk is not to be regarded as legal advice. It is strictly for informational purposes. CCHP always recommends that you consult with legal counsel if you're interested in a formal legal opinion. And also if I happen to mention a company or so some type of product, know that neither I nor CCHP has any relevant financial interest arrangement or affiliation with such an organization. So telehealth and prescribing, you need to keep in mind when you're talking about telehealth and prescribing that you really have two jurisdictions that are at play here. You have your federal law, which essentially covers controlled substances, and then state laws that cover everything else. So state law, what they look at um, is also the patient provider relationship and how that's established when you're using telehealth. And also know that the law that is in play here is really the law uh, where the patient is located, the state that the patient is located. So not necessarily the state that you are in, but where the state the patient is in whom you're treating. However, you're providing services in another state, there may be regulations or laws in your own state that could impact the services, you know, such as certain um, requirements by your licensing board in order to say when you're prescribing things that you're following like certain appropriate laws or parameters when you're prescribing. So that may also impact how you use telehealth to provide the services. But for the most part, these are like the general areas that need to be aware of, controlled substances, federal law, state laws, kind of everything else, especially establishing patient provider relationship. And it's the law in which the patient is located in uh, those state laws that control most things. So federal law, for the federal law and telehealth policy on prescribing, it's really underneath the Ryan Hate Act. So for those who aren't familiar with this, this is an act that was um, passed, a federal law that was passed several years ago, I think it was about maybe a decade or two ago, um, that has a section related to like how you use telehealth to prescribe a controlled substance. So a lot of times when you hear people talk about telehealth for prescribing, they give it the shorthand the Ryan Hate Act or the Ryan Hate section. And that's the reason why, it's because it happens to appear in that particular bill. And what it does is that it gives you very limited scenarios in which you can use telehealth to prescribe where that telehealth provider has never seen the patient in person before. And basically what it means is that the patient needs to be with someone or in some type of location in order to have that telehealth provider be able to prescribe without having seen the patient in person before. And those scenarios are like the patient is in a DA registered hospital or clinic at the time that telehealth interaction takes place, or they're with a DA registered practitioner um, when that telehealth interaction takes place. So basically like they're with somebody or, you know, in some location where they can get help if needed um, when that telehealth prescribing moment happens between the telehealth provider and like the patient. There are a couple of other exceptions, such as when the telehealth practitioner is with Indian Health Services or working with a tribe or tribe organization um, for like these Indian Health Services, uh, but those are a little bit narrow too. So most of like, for most people, probably the scenarios that will involve them are when the patient's in a DEA registered hospital or clinic or with a DEA registered practitioner. Two other exceptions that are on the books as well is that when, um, if the per telehealth provider is on a DEA registry. Now, this is the theory of this because it's not something that actually exists right now when this video is being recorded, which is October of 2021. Um, the theory was that the DEA would create this registry and people would apply to be on there. If they applied to be on there, they passed all the checks and everything. They're a good actor. So there's not, there's less concern about them prescribing control substances over telehealth and, and being a bad actor about that. But so far the DA has not created that registry yet. So there's been a lot of questions on like when that will actually get in place. We thought we were getting close to that a couple of years ago, but then it didn't happen. So it's still in bit in limbo. 
The other sort of exception is when a public health emergency is declared. And right now, again, as this video is being recorded, we're still in the midst of COVID-19 and the federal public health emergency. So that means that exception has kicked in. So what you've had now during COVID-19 is telehealth providers able to like prescribe or control substances without any of these other exceptions needing to take place here. So the patient didn't need to be in the DEA registered hospital or clinic when the telehealth provider does their prescription or they didn't need to be with a, in the presence of a DEA registered practitioner because a public health emergency was in place there. However, when that public health emergency is declared over, that exception goes away and then these narrow um, exceptions like kick back in. So those would be the only situations then in which you can like use telehealth to prescribe a controlled substance. So what do state laws do because they control everything else about prescribing? A lot of them really centers around establishing the patient provider relationship because that's something you need before you can prescribe. So most of the states will allow you to use telehealth to establish that patient provider relationship, but usually mainly through live video, although there are a couple of states that allow that relationship to be, relationship to be um, built or established through, through asynchronous, through Storm Ford. It's a lot rarer. So the majority of states is really, it needs to take place via live video. There's also some states that put limitations on what can be prescribed. So you'll see for a lot of the policies that exist, they'll say like you need to follow like existing, other existing laws and regulations both on the federal, federal level. So that means like, you know, the Ryan Hate Act is still in play here, um, but they may also put other types of limitations on what you can prescribe that aren't controlled substances, such as for example, abortion inducing drugs. That doesn't appear in all states, but it does appear in some states So be aware of that. Um, but for the most part, a lot of states do allow you to use live video to establish that patient provider relationship, but there may be some exceptions on like what you can prescribe and it may not necessarily just be on controlled substances. So that was your quick overview of prescribing and telehealth. If you would like more information, especially about a specific state, please go to CCHP's website. We do track all the laws, regulations, and Medicaid policies for all 50 states in the District of Columbia. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. And I just wanted to thank you and I hope to see you on another informational video.